That's Nick. And that's Joseph. And today we're here to talk about Haunted Mansion, the third film directed by Justin Simeon, which is being released courtesy of Disney on July 28th, 2023. Uh, I know Justin's other films. Uh, did you see Dear White People in no. 2014? Okay. Uh, but we did review Bad Hair in 2020, oh, yes. which we were both fans of. Uh, Dear White People is excellent, worth seeing. There's also, uh, he turned that into a series, which ended in 2021 as well. So, the 2003 film. Oh, uh, yeah, directed by Rob Minkoff, uh, the director of Lion King, uh, which came out, yeah, 20 years ago. I found that hard to watch. <laughs> I, yeah, I put it on recently because I'd not seen it in anticipation of this, and it is... Mm, it's not insufferable, but it's really dull. This one's better. It's better. I think we can both agree that it's not a film for us. I didn't care for it. I don't think these kind of movies for me are for me. These PG horror films that are for kids. Like, this was missing a lot. But the story. A single mom named Gabby hires a tour guide, a psychic, a priest, and a historian to help exercise her newly bought mansion after discovering it is inhabited by ghosts. And that's the that's from the IMDb synopsis. Yeah. Because there's a thing with Tiffany Haddish's character saying she's not a psychic, she's a medium. So Gabby, the mom, is played by Rosario Dawson. Mm -hmm. She has like a nine year old son whose name is Travis, played by Chase Dillon. Travis, and they've just purchased a mansion in Louisiana somewhere. She was a medical doctor in New York, but needed a break because her husband, the father of her child, has died. We don't learn that until the end, but she wanted to get away and help her son, who seems to be kind of socially awkward, have a better life. So they show up at this house. It's haunted. So she employs the help of the priest, Owen Wilson, the psychic slash medium, Tiffany Haddish, a historian played by Danny DeVito. And then the lead of the film is Lakeith Stanfield. He's an astrophysicist turned tour guide who has invented a camera lens that can capture ghost particles mm -hmm. and we need to get into all of that but they all join forces in this haunted mansion to figure out what's going on and we find out that there's this like evil spirit named crump played by jared leto who is on a mission to snatch 1000 souls so he can get out of the further basically and the thousand thousandth soul we think he wants is Lakeith Stanfield's because Lakeith's backstory is that he has a lot of grief over his dead wife. But really, the bad guy wants the little boy's soul. And of course, they all stop that from happening. Jamie Lee Curtis plays another psychic slash medium. Madame Leonta. Who's trapped in the house. She, along with Tiffany Haddish, banish. They do a um, banishment incantation and send Jared Leto back to hell. And then all's well that ends well. All the spirits who were living in the house, all 999 of them, seem happy there now. So they all live together, like all the leads, all the spirits. And they have one big dance party brunch. Yeah. The end. That, the, the spread of which was, you know. It was a little ragged. This is a Disney production. We couldn't get rid <laughs> Okay. Um, I don't even know where to begin. I, so the opening I thought was weak. Uh -huh. Because we see Rosario driving her BMW with a U-Haul trailer in the back to this dilapidated, haunted... I mean, the mansion is covered in cobwebs and sheets. I just don't even understand how a it, professional woman who clearly has money would show up to a house... There was no realtor. It's set in modern time. There are no photographs of this dusty-ass house. It looks like Grey Gardens at, yes. at, at the, in the dead of night. And then when she shows up, she calls the movers like, where are you? And they're like, well, we're four hours behind. Well, how could you not be here? We left at the same time. Like, they're driving a huge truck. But anyway, they get into the house, they see ghosts. And she's like, oh, not going to stay here. And they run out. Mm -hmm. But then we see Jared Leto saying, like, you'll be back. So we find out that anyone who enters the house ends up returning because wherever they go, they're haunted. So it like pushes them back to the house. So then her plan is to have all these people help her. As, as if the ghosts are procuring yes. for Jared Leto. So Owen Wilson's the first one. He's a priest, but we find out he's really a con artist. He's not a priest. Mm -hmm. uh, and he's the one who gets Lakeith Stanfield. They together get Tiffany Haddish. 
And then they also get Danny DeVito, who's a professor at a school who knows a lot about this house. Mm -hmm. And together they all figure out what's going on. But this film has that component of like the, the further, like this alternate where yeah. they can like astral project. Yeah. And that's where they learn about the 999 souls. On and, the wall. Yeah. Um, and that the big gag is that I guess it doesn't matter how Jared Leto got the other souls, but the 1,000th soul has to be willing. Mm -hmm. So then the gag is that as the audience and as the other people in the house, we think it's Lakeith Stanfield who would be the one because he's grieving. The only reason he invented this camera lens and quit his career as an astrophysicist, shout out to... Girls uh, will be girls. Girls will be girls. Jack Plotnick. And Jack Plotnick. Um, is that he wanted to be able to see his wife, his dead wife, one last time. We need to talk more about that. But Let's. But So we would assume, oh, he's going to be willing to go to the spirit realm so he can see his wife. But really what's been happening is Jared Leto has been communicating with the little boy to convince him that he needs to like give up his soul so he can be with his dad. I Interesting that that's opening on the same day as Talk to Me. Oh, okay. So these PG like movies for kids that are supposed to be funny, but the thing that bothered me the most about this movie and why I probably wouldn't let my nine-year-old watch it is the basic premise of Jared Leto's character is super morbid. He's a serial killer. I would let my nine-year-old watch it. And he has buried all these bodies and it's the spirits of those bodies that are haunting the house but also, like, he's trapped there. The movie doesn't explain why he's, like, the most powerful spirit in this realm. Yeah, he's Scrooge. Right? But, yeah, he just keeps killing people. I, I just think that's so dark for something that's so goofy and silly and yeah. dumb. Sure. For but, kids. But, yeah, you know, back in the day, back in the day when I would watch uh, Disney movies for children, you know, even before my time, they were pretty dark and pretty uh, impressive in a way that this is just not. No. Rosario's going on my worst hair list because her as, wig... As soon as I saw that, I... It's a hair hat. But what bothered me the most beyond the style of it is that it's a very straight, like, bob. Mm -hmm. And then in the end, when everything's all happy and we find out she finally got a job as a doctor at some local hospital and there seems to be, like... We need to talk about this too, but like a romance with Lakeith and her that I don't know where that came from, but she's dressed like vibrant and pretty pastel colors. She looks very happy and her hair is like naturally curly at the end mm -hmm. and it looks beautiful on her. Mm -hmm. So you mean to tell me while this lady was in this haunted mansion being harassed by 999 spirits, she had time to flat iron her hair? I guess so. That's so dumb. This is the perfect example of why I put things on the worst hair list. Not because I like, oh, they look ugly. It's not that. It's that these hairstyles don't make sense. It's nonsensical. That's yeah. why I add people to the list. I, I was also wondering about her wardrobe and Travis's wardrobe because they look Victorian era. I, I, for, initially, I'm like, oh, I bet they're also dead like Nicole Kidman and the Oh, others, that's a good point. I didn't think about that. They, they looked funny. It looked off, but... They seem real off. And Rosario's character was probably the most off to me. She just seemed seems so corny and quirky when she finds out they're a ghost she goes oh well i guess we're not gonna stay here let's go and then every time she sees the ghost she's like burr, burr, i don't know any uh educated adult woman that's gonna have that kind of reaction when immediately confronted with the paranormal would have done more research before she arrived at this house this is a medical doctor a person of science even when danny devito's character has a heart attack he she acts like she doesn't know Yes. Her son is the one tending to him. Mm -hmm. And she keeps saying boundaries because he's trying to like take his temperature or something. Hear his heartbeat. I thought that was really weird. Um, she, I don't know. She she has a hard road, uh, a Rosario Dawson, because she's in one of the straight jacketed, one of those roles where she's just a sweet mom. And if the script's not there for that character, then, you know, you need to call Tony Collette, I guess. This plan makes no sense because we're told that Owen Wilson thinks that if they like they brought Lakeith because they know he has this camera and that if he can take a picture of the ghost, then maybe they can figure out who these ghosts are. That's ridiculous. That doesn't make any That doesn't make any sense. sense. I'm gonna get to what I think the better movie would have been. Sure. Um so I thought my favorite character in the movie is um Charity Jordan plays Alyssa. 
the wife of Lakeith. She, and I just thought the minute she got on screen, just that smile and her personality, it was just like so perfect. And I really hate that she's only in the movie for like 90 seconds. She's really in one scene. I think Lakeith Stanfield is an excellent actor. And I think that the performance he gives is not worthy of the rest no, of the film. No, I wrote that down. Because there are several moments, because I was mostly kind of bored and I chuckled a few times and some of the supporting people are cute. But Lakeith was, whenever he starts, like he tears up several times about his dead wife and I started getting emotional. <laughs> it's such a weird like roller coaster of tones and feelings, but he has quit his job, career, abandoned his career as an astrophysicist because he wants to try to find the spirit of his dead wife, which already is nonsensical because we see that he's like a staunch scientist who doesn't believe in anything. For him to do all that and invent this camera, and then the minute he gets to, the, when he's lured to the haunted mansion, he's like, this is not real. He's pretending to take pictures. Your one chance to actually use this damn camera you invented, and he doesn't do it. Yep. And then before he leaves, because Rosario pays him, we see his notebook, he's just been doodling, and he goes, well, there's nothing here, power of suggestion, bye-bye. Why? It doesn't make any sense that his character would think these people are crazy. You're crazy, sir. He's very <laughs> Meryl Streep, he has doubt. Um, I, it, before, also part of the opening, we have these odd cameos from Joe Coy and Mary Lou Henner. Oh, and I like Joe Coy, and he's fine, and I mean, he has nothing to do, and then Mary Lou Henner, that was really weird. She's part of this, because... At when Lakeith quits his career as an astrophysicist, he becomes a tour guide. But he's mm -hmm. And all these people are going on these tour guides in New Orleans because they want to see ghosts. And he's like, there's no such thing as ghosts. And you just have Mary Lou Henner... Uh, as a silly, as a woman yeah. named Carol. There are two Carols. But again, to double down on how Lakeith, Ben, uh, is staunchly not interested in remotely considering that there might be anything supernatural on these tours. So Tiffany Haddish as this medium, I think that I don't, I don't care for her as an actor. I do think she's funny sometimes, but I think her acting in this is a little crunchy because in the first part of when she enters the movie, she's pretending to be this like renowned medium. So her dialogue is very stiff. She's very stiff. She's, well, and it almost feels like she is having a hard time remembering her dialogue, so she's maybe reading it off a cue card. It's just very odd. The, the affect isn't really working for her. No, because the way her character, because slowly her character sort of morphs into who she really is, which basically is just Tiffany Haddish being Tiffany Haddish. I had a hard time believing that that woman could feign or even come up with the dialogue she's giving in the beginning. So that felt really sure. odd. But as she kind of loosens up there, she does have a couple of funny moments. She does moments. have funny moments. I don't, I, her contacts were driving me crazy because... They, they give her like hazel blue eyes like or she, something? She looked like Lala Anthony in this a little bit to me. Um, with those, with, the, with them eyeballs. She looks nice in her little costume. Better, okay, Jamie, better than Jamie Lee Curtis. Jamie Lee Curtis in the crystal ball. If, you, if I didn't know that was her, I wouldn't have recognized her because her face feels like it's pulled back. It, it is. I think she looks cool in the crystal ball. The, yeah, that effect is cool. And then when we see her out of the ball, like because she was the medium who worked with Jared Leto back in the 1700s when he was up to his bullshit. Her costuming is really weird. She looked like she's costumed like Sigourney Weaver in um, Exodus: Gods and Kings. Uh huh. Like why is she? <laughs> who, who played Toya? Uh, that seemed real fancy. I know Sigourney's my girl. I don't. She shouldn't have played an Egyptian, but she looked better than I think Jamie Lee Curtis looks in that. Uh, th that that headdress is more befitting of like a drag queen doing an ABBA performance. Yeah, it was a little over the top. Danny DeVito is always cute to me and always funny. And in this film, I feel like anytime he's on screen, it's cute. But he's he, cute. both him and Tiffany and Owen Wilson are really just doing what they always do. And it's cute at times. And Owen Wilson, who lately has dri driven me crazy in some films he's done, actually, he has a couple funny moments. Yeah. Like, again, and by funny, I mean you will lightly chuckle. I kept thinking, why don't they just burn this house down? Because Rosario's character says, like, we tried to leave, we were gone, we, we went from hotel to hotel, and wherever we went, the spirits would follow us. She seems so non-bothered, though. Yeah, I was just very, like, she is just like, well, this is what it's going to be. Get some haunted. <laughs> Get some haunted. <laughs> um, okay, I think the best scene in the film is in the trailer, and it's when mm -hmm. Lakeith and Danny DeVito go to the police to try to get a sketch artist rendering of Jared Leto. 
And what we don't see in the trailer is that after they, this artist, who I recognized, but anyway, when he shows the picture, then, then what we don't see in the trailer is that Danny DeVito goes, okay, now what if he had a layer of skin over him? And then that's so stupid because then they see, oh, it's Jared Leto and somehow they cross-reference it to 1788. It, it's a drawing of Jared Leto who does not need to be in this movie. No, because we don't ever see Jared Leto except a port, like a painting of him. The spirit that Jared Leto is supposed to be playing, Crump, is kind of a bad CGI ghost. And the voice is like a computerized voice. I, I bet you Jared Leto uh, will contest that, that he uh, met ghosts and did heavy research to get that voice. Probably. Uh, but yeah, it, it, I, the special effects in this are fine, but except for I hated how Crump looked. Yeah. Uh, so the film is a little over two hours. It feels half an hour too long. It, it certainly does. Um, you brought a, it To me, it has the vibe of the first Hocus Pocus a little bit, except you don't kind of have uh, any camp performances, really. No. The story of Crump is more interesting than this movie. This guy who was like a serial killer because he wanted to get back at all the people who mocked him. And then now he's in the further capturing souls for Christ. I don't know what he's doing. You know, and this was written by Katie Dippold, who wrote The Heat and Snatch, but also the 2016 uh, version of Ghostbusters, which uh, the subtext of that was all about bullying, which I think this is kind of an extension of that as well. So Jamie Lee Curtis tells them that the banishment incantation requires a personal effect of Jared Leto. So they end up taking a tour I was so confused. The haunted mansion where all the spirits are was Jared Leto's home, but his childhood home, which is like hours away, is where all the bodies were buried. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm confused why the spirits aren't occupying the house where their bodies are. But that childhood home is a historical uh, like monument. So it they, you can have, take tours there. So another interesting cameo is... Uh, Winona Ryder. Winona Ryder. And I did think that that scene it dragged on a little too long but she was kind of interesting she's kind of, she was kind of fun i wanted more yeah. actually of, of something like that and then dan levy pops up oh that's right who i thought was cute cute playing kind of like this ghost story a la clue so the personal effect they end up getting from crump jared leto is his top hat his planter's peanut hat and he's so he know Jared Leto knows that, that hat can banish him, so he tries to destroy it by throwing it in an open fire. Mm -hmm. What was that hat made of that it didn't burn? It didn't burn. That, that hat was in that fire for a long time, and it did not and, burn. And they still had a piece of it. There's another moment where they discover the seance room where uh, they, they hit something, and some kind of a flammable substance starts pouring out, and Lakeith goes, I know what this is, and lights a match. And, and it looks like oil. And this, you're not... If it was my, if it was, if I was Rosario Dawson, if I was Gabby, I would be like, "You're not going to start my house on fire. What are you doing?" I was very confused that this man, who's a scientist, just thought, "Let me throw a flame into this like crude oil looking and thing." And this whole thing lights up. Uh, it, it's almost like an Oppenheimer. Where does it stop? Is the world going to blow up? I'd ra I would probably would have been more entertained watching. Michael Jackson has a long form video of his song "Ghost" mm -hmm. that I think. Is more entertaining than this, maybe. Yeah. Um, I, again, I, I think that it's it's toying with things we've seen before. Uh, you brought up House on Haunted Hill with Vincent Price. So I think the better story would have been a combination of House on Haunted Hill and Ghostbusters. And I think for what we got in this movie, a better adjustment would have been have all of these people come to the house at once. Mm -hmm. Because we spend like half an hour luring all the different people. I didn't need that. I think they all should have just shown up like Gabby would have gotten them all there under false pretenses, knowing that they're going to be trapped and then they have to figure it out because this plan of taking photographs seems so stupid. Uh, like, well, and goes no, and then that lens ends up being broken and it doesn't do anything because no, it doesn't. the photographs we see of the ghosts are open to speculation. The reason they know what's going on is because there's a seance that happens and Tiffany Haddish thinks she's the one who's going to astral project, but it ends up being Lakeith. And then Lakeith ends up talking to the owner of the house, and he explains what happened with Jared Leto's character and all that. Gracie was this man whose wife died and who uh, 
had all these seances, seances with Madame Leonta. Uh, Jamie to, Lee Curtis. To see his dead wife, Eleanor. So what they did, because they had a seance every day for a year, was open the door for all these spirits to be here. Um, it's very much... Uh, I, I don't know if this is a conscious subtext of the film, but both Gracie and Travis and Ben are doing this thing that's basic. It's Orpheus and Eurydice, like looking, going to try to save a loved one from Hades, because that's essentially where Crump is being pushed down to at the end. Then, I mean, another kind of emotional moment. Well, it's prefaced with something really stupid. Tiffany Haddish draws a diagram for we, Lakeith. We don't need a Venn diagram. Oh my God, concept. it was so basic. She's like, this is the world of the living. Here's a circle. This is the world of the dead. Here's a circle. And where they intersect is where those souls are at in rest. And then she draws a line through it. It was so dumb. But then she tells a story about how her dad died and how she calls them like ghost winks. Ghost wink. I th is it Owen Wilson? Or is it Owen? Owen Wilson says, he comes up with the term ghost wink. I think. Anyway, a final ghost wink is that because we find we find out that Lakeith's wife Alyssa dies because she went to go get some tater tots and got into a car accident. She's a foodie. Mm -hmm. so, now, not only did she go to ta get tater tots, what caused the accident is she veered off to get Hagen Doss. Baskin Robbins. Or Baskin, whatever. Yeah. Ice cream. So in the end of the film, we see that now that Lakeith has moved on, there's a kitty cat at his front door, and the kitty cat has a necklace on that says tater tot. So we can assume that's the spirit of his dead wife. The end. Again, that that dialogue that Lakeith has to say is really so stupid. It but, is. But he sells it. I he don't know. does. He, he sells that moment in a way that... Uh, this kind of movie is not for me. It's not adult. It's not funny. I don't know what kids would like this because there's nothing really cute about it. I did really like the kid playing Travis. Mm -hmm. I thought he was cute. Who's also in The Harder They Fall. But even like the way the movie looks, I don't see kids getting excited about it. There's one scene where these kids at school are chasing him down the driveway and Ben is like, what What was going on there? And he goes, they were running me home. If, I were, on, if I were on an airplane, this film would be tolerable. Mm -hmm. It's better than The Curse of Bridge Hollow, for instance. I mean, it's on, it with, would be in the same level to me as Kelly that. Rowland. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What would you give this movie? I would give it two out of five. I would give it two out of five as well. Anything else? Um, oh, speaking of Orpheus, we already have a black Orpheus. 1959, Marcel Camus. Noted. Hit the thanks button. Listen to our podcast. Bye.